Hello, welcome to CTN Member Highlight. I'm Leslie McVean, and today my guest is Bruce Brown. Hello, Bruce. Good afternoon. Well, you're the former curator of the um, Center, Center for Maine Contemporary Art. I am. Yeah. I was there for 20 years and went back for one more, so uh -huh. altogether 21 years. And you curated over 200 shows while you were there. I did indeed. Yeah. And as Bob Keyes has said, you're one of the most enthusiastic um, curators of photography and collectors and appreciators of, of the medium. And here you are at the Union of Maine Visual Artists Gallery curating a show. I am, and it came up rather suddenly, and I was only too pleased to respond and, uh, and, and say, yes, I'd love to do this. So someone comes to you with this, you're going to do this show, and you're like, yeah, sure. And then what happens in your head? You go, well, what is it going to be about? Well, I, uh, for some years, I've been thinking about um, uh, the name of the show, by the way, is Branching Out. Mm -hmm. That uh, is significant in several ways. One, it has to do with the geographical distribution of the artists. There are 39 artists in this show, and they uh, uh, come from all the way from Kittery Point to Sorrento, Maine, then from Bangor over to Blanchard. Um, and so that's, it really is nearly statewide. So that's one way of branching out. Um, a, a, a second way has to do with processes. Um, there are historical processes uh, back into the 1840s and 50s in this show through tintypes and, uh, and then later some palladium prints right up to digital work, um, which is very common throughout this uh, thing. But most of all, uh, for me personally, the idea of branching out has to do with the idea that I haven't done all that much work uh, with, with landscapes. Um, and to do something as specific as trees uh, is uh, quite novel for me. So I'm branching out as well. I know this was a submission and a sort of a juried show. How did you make the decision what, which pieces would be included in the show? I, uh, I made a list. I, I've been keeping a list for maybe a year and a half or two years about um, p artists whose work about trees uh, has, uh, has been of interest to me. So I had that to go by. I did not uh, send out a, a general call throughout uh, the state because A, uh, there, there was neither time nor uh, I would have been so bombarded. But what I did do, and this was important, um, and it goes back to branching out again, th because this is the UMVA's gallery here in Portland, it was important that I contact all of the, those artists and ask them to submit work. And a number of artists are new to me, which is always a pleasure. I always like to find out who else is out there. Uh, you never can keep up. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're blessed with so many wonderful artists in this state, and, and I can't imagine being able to keep up with all of them. No, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so was hanging the show a problem? Because the, the work is so varied, and I, I can't imagine how you decided to group everything. Oh, no. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, hanging shows are, are, are my greatest pleasure. Uh, and I think of myself as an amateur. I love what other people can do, and I like supporting uh, artists in uh, in their endeavors. Uh, so that 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 that's step one. But if I do have a talent, I do think that um, the greatest fun for me is is arranging shows on the wall. But I always also like to have a second or a second opinion as well, um, and so. Um, our, our hanging crew really uh, helped out with three or four wonderful suggestions. Well, you had some good people on that crew, oh, and I know it was a, sh a small group, but it was That's a correct. very, very well effective, well-chosen, yeah. good, good eyes. Absolutely, and all were uh, UMVA members. Yeah. So. Well, the show is beautiful, Thank and you. maybe we should talk about a few pieces here. Okay. Well, here we are in front of uh, a, a really striking photograph that I've been drawn to since from the beginning. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about the artist and about the piece? 
I'll be happy to do that. The artist is Ni Rong, and uh, she is from China. But she and her husband, um, Do Dorsey Gardner, uh, have a home just around the corner from the previous Center for Maine Contemporary Art, now that CMCA has just moved to Rockland. They have purchased the uh, building, uh, the former building, and are doing a wonderful job to renovate it. Um, and, and its ultimate purpose is yet to be decided. But in, in any event, they live so close by, and it's great that it, 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 it's in their hands. This comes from a body of work in which uh, Ni uh, has done quite a number of self-portraits. They are all by, most of them are really very close to the water because she is thinking about her, her life divided into two parts, China and the United States. In this particular instance, um, she set, set the camera up and it took about three days before she got what she really was looking for and it all comes down to this little moment when all this, uh, a breeze came along and finally just sort of blew the dress a, a little bit. Um, but it's stunning, stunning work. And another thing that I like about it is that this seems almost more like uh, less like a, f a photograph than, than a print, or you know, a print quality of, of an etching, for example. At first I thought that's what it was, and I thought, what's that doing in the show? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a photography yeah. show. But it just, it just brings you right, right through, and you start here with that brilliant yes. red, but then it's, it's just the most spectacular piece of work. Yes. I, I love it. Yes. So let's maybe move to another one yes. and talk about well, something Well, we could else. go to something that's totally different. Okay. Uh, and, uh, very historical. Well, these next two are tintypes by Shoshana White. They are. And instead of going to the digital route with uh, Ni Rong, we're going back in history uh, when tintypes in the 1860s and 1870s were, uh, were everywhere and were so very, very popular. Uh, we have uh, here in Maine with Shoshona and uh, White and, and Cole Caswell, two of the best artists working with tintypes. Uh, there's a really beautiful images. And actually, they're not made out of tin. They're made mo out really more out of lead. And they're instantly they, uh, uh, they can be made and just handed over to um, whoever it is that, uh, uh, that may be buying the work uh, and what have you. What I want to say about Cole is that he is following in the tradition where tintypes were uh, on the street kinds of of, of, of uh, work that photographers did. People could uh, go to carnivals and, and um, uh, things of that sort and have their pictures taken immediately. He does the same thing by going to the Common Ground Fair. He's been doing this for several years. You can go and for a very minimal amount of money, uh, he will take a picture of you. And in an hour's time, it's, you, it's yours. It was the so here we have another photograph that's been kind of a magnet for people. It yes. just draws you in. You want to talk a little bit about this one? Yes, indeed. This uh, large, beautiful photograph uh, is done by Gifford Ewing, who spends a good part of his life in Sorrento, Maine, way up in Washington County, I believe it is, uh, and also out in Colorado. Here, he has used three different processes. Uh, it, start, it started with a regular, a regular photograph, which he then turned into a digital print, and now it's been transformed again into a carbon print. Wow. And the image itself is, was taken out west, as half of his work is, um, and uh, atop a 13,000-foot uh, kind of mountaintop out, out, out west, um, and he's found this fantastic sculptural image that uh, looks, well, it looks exactly like a sculpture. And he's saying that it could be 5,000 years old already, and it might last for another 5,000 years. Just an amazing piece. It is an amazing yeah. piece. And then the technique, too, sounds yes. a little more complicated. Exactly. Yeah. Well, he knows what he's doing. He certainly does, and it's been very effective. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are at another photograph in a whole different process. <laughs> That's correct. This photograph was done by Jeremy Barnard, who has uh, had a summer, beautiful summer home uh, in friendship for quite a number of years. Um, essentially, he's from northern Massachusetts and goes back and forth a, a great deal. 
most of his work is in black and white, and he really, really loves infrared, uh, the process, in which the images uh, seem very, very white uh, in, in comparison to uh, a, a more natural color, let us say. But in this instance, this photograph really, really does work. It's alive, thanks to the, I think, the, 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 the way that the branches move, this wonderful opening um, up to the sky. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's quite, quite, sp quite spectacular. Well, we talked a little bit about it, and it is, it's, it's magical. It is magical. And I, I'm sorry for our viewing audience that they can't really appreciate it as much as we can standing right here, but they need to come in and see the show. That's the answer. Yeah. Yes, and, indeed. And fortunately, we have the show up until August 27th. We do, and with the uh, first Friday in August mm -hmm. should be really popular with people, but the very last day will be special because it's the Portland Arts Festival as well in which there will be dozens and dozens and dozens of, of tents with artists uh, with all their work up and down Congress Street. All one has to do is come by 516 Congress. And the doors will be open. Very open. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bruce. It's a pleasure.